Hi, Rich. Uh, what I want to do today is give you a quick overview of what I've been doing with the testing so that uh, your student helper doesn't have to go from scratch as he tries to figure out how to run these tests. So I've got uh, a number of these four inch beams that we've already broken. I'm going to show you how we set up one of these. So I already got an accelerometer from our uh, controller. Channel one is going to the head and channel two is going to go to the end of the beam. The uh, channel one's already screwed on and uh, here is our channel two. And I'm just going to bolt it. Now you're probably going to use our um, teardrop excel or uh, maybe you have one of your own which then will get glued but uh, this has gone pretty well with this heavier one but uh, Whatever you choose to do is fine. But uh, tighten that guy up good on the end. And uh, check the cable, make sure it's tight. And then I'm going to mount it right on here, the end of the shaker. I think you have the same shaker by you, and you also have a bigger one, I think, of your own. All right, so tighten them up. And I try to be consistent, you know, not angled off but that it's every test it's sitting exactly the same way and we do want to tape down that cable so he doesn't do a lot of extra whipping around so we don't get any cable noise or damage the cable too much all right so we're set up on here that's the setup I got this little catcher here so that if it does violently crack off that the accelerometer doesn't go crashing down and damage it so you might want to set up something like that. It's pretty crude looking, but it saves the accelerometer. Uh, two things uh, before we start. I've got the uh, power on the Excels off and my amp is off. I think that's always a good practice so that you aren't uh, getting yourself in danger of anything or damaging anything. So, Okay, so Rich, um, the first thing we should do is uh, turn on the Excel power supplies and you do that by going to configuration and inputs and uh, I have channel 1 and 2 on so um, and, and their TEDs have been already activated so all the sensitivities are in there but uh, I'm going to turn on the Excel power supply and I hit apply and you hear a click and the green lights on the controller are on so we know we now have power and the Excels are ready to go so that's the first thing I do and then the next thing you do is you turn on your amplifier and so uh, just simply turn it on and uh, turn up the gain. But whenever you're not doing the test, turn that off so you don't accidentally damage the shaker or anything else. So we're good to go. And now um, what we need to know is what the resonance is on this beam. So we're going to do a sine sweep. I've got two tests open here. Um, this one is already all set up and I like these graphs for my sine sweep. We're just going to quickly show you the uh, main settings there. On, uh, so it's a sine test. Uh, if you need to do that for the first time you would go to a uh, new test and click sign. But I've already got it made. And I'll send you my uh, test profile so you can really work from there. But edit test. I do a very low level 0.01 G's and uh, you got to kind of figure out what the resonance is going to be roughly of your beam. I don't think the resonance is going to be less than 10 hertz, so I'm going to go from 10 hertz to 500. We're going to sweep through that. Uh, I'm going to sweep up, although uh, sweeping down can be uh, in, in some cases more effective. And I'm going to go from 10 hertz and I'm going to set up a resonance table so that I know exactly what the resonance is. Sweep rate, um, I have been running one octave per minute. I'm going to do the standard three for this test so that it just runs a little more quickly. But uh, one would be appropriate. And then the rest of the parameters and limits are just the uh, defaults. Under channels, just to remind you that we want to control on channel one and make sure his system limits are applied for channel one and we're ready to go. So I'm gonna run the test.
and it's going to sweep through from 10 hertz to 500 and we're going to find the resonance. It's probably, if it's been consistent uh, with the other tests, it should be about 46 or 47 hertz. We should see a, a reasonable resonance. So we'll let this thing run a minute. I think we're doing good. Is it running? Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. It's so low level, you probably aren't ah, going to. Okay. Yeah. So there's our big resonance right there. About 47, it's going to look like. Well, the resonance table is going to tell us the uh, actual specific resonance in a moment. But this is the first uh, task. You gotta run a resonance sweep to find out where your first mode of resonance is. All right, so Rich, uh, two resonances were identified, but the main resonance is at 47.5. And when I uh, scroll over that 47.5, it gives me the transmissibility value of 31 and a phase of about minus 102. Um, so I will record that in my lab notebook, 47 and a half. And uh, 102. Tr uh, degrees and a transmissibility of 31. So now I, I just get this for information's sake, so I'm going to abort this test. And I'm going to leave that test profile and I'm going to go to my other profile that I've already created. And here I've got eight graphs that I like and I will, I've already saved that graph layout, but I will send that to you uh, because there's some key information in these. And so now what you want to do I've been running a series of tests at different G levels. We're going to edit the test. And uh, I've run 50 Gs, 40 Gs, 25. Right now I'm on a series of 20 Gs. So 20 Gs and uh, that resonance was at 47. So I'm going to just have a little uh, range between 30 and 80. I kind of find the middle there. So 20 Gs to 20 Gs. That's all set up. Schedule. I'm going to set up a phase track. So if I click here, you got all these choices. We want to phase track from and we want to phase track at that resonance. So the last time I did a test, the last beam, the resonance was at 46.1. This one is just a little different, so it's 47.5. I set in 96 hours, so I got plenty of time to test it. And uh, it's going to track at minus 90 degrees. And uh, in fact, most of my tests when I did that sign sweep the, uh, the uh, degrees was minus 91 or 92. This one said 102, but we're going to set it at 90 because uh, that's where we're going to get probably the most uh, damage there. Sweep rate, uh, we're going to go with three octaves per minute. That's the standard parameters. We're going to keep just all the standard parameters. The limits, the only two limits I've got different are my startup and my drive. Right now, if you look at this graph down here, I've got a pretty tight uh, setup for my last test. If we leave it like this, we're going to get an abort as we start up. So I'm going to back this off just for the startup. 0.1, 1, 0.1, 1, and 1. Those are kind of our defaults. And if I hit apply, you'll see that that graph has adjusted itself and has moved off a little bit. But once I get the test started, I'm going to go back here and tweak these back down to uh, make sure I got safe limits. These are all uh, presets. Here's a key one. Now this is already again set up, 
So when I send you this, it should be set, but we want to control on channel two. We don't want channel one to be doing 20 Gs. We want channel two, the end of the beam, to be doing 20 Gs. And, but I do want my limits to apply to channel one. And I put on this enable an abort for channel two so that when it starts to crack, I'm either going to get a very large uh, value or I'm going to get some negative value. So I, I put a, a plus 60 and a minus six abort limits in there. And uh, that'll automatically shut the test off. And that way I don't have to sit here and babysit the whole thing. Uh, it'll just stop on its own. All right. Data, I do have it prompting for a name at the beginning so that uh, I can keep a very organized set. And I did ask it to give me data every 20,000 cycles and at the end of the test so that if I wanted any information throughout the test, I've got that in the data file. And uh, other than that, I think all is, oh yeah, this resonance. We did, I did have a little problem with the previous plastics we used with this sweep rate. The, the, the default was too conservative, I guess. So I've adjusted that to 0 0.01. But that should come with the data file, but you might want to check that. All right, I think we're ready to run it. One uh, comment I think is worth noting is under configuration, under uh, email notification, I have set up an email so that it sends me um, an email at the completion of the test or if it aborts. So again, I don't have to babysit it. I get an email last night at 4.58 a.m. telling me the test aborted and I knew the beam was broken so that when I came in this morning I could jump right at, right at it, take it off and go. So that's very handy. I, I love VR software for that uh, already right there. Okay, so we're ready to go. One thing I do now this is a 20G, it's not as aggressive as the 50G, but I would like to put on my um, manual controls so that I can uh, slowly start the test up so I don't blow anything up right away. So I click manual controls and it starts and it's not, it doesn't look like anything's going to happen yet. I got to hit the start button here. When I hit that start button, it asks me to start over from my last test and I'm going to do that. And here's where I get a chance to put in my uh, information about this test. This is beam 108. It is SRTD at 47.5, so I'm going to change that. And um, it is 20 G's, and that was from the last test, 20 G. So this is a 20 G on the end of a 4-inch ABS beam, SRTD at 47.5 hertz uh, for beam 108. Ready to go. So it's going to jump up to uh, 20, minus 24 dB, and I'm going to let it uh, stabilize. And you can see it on the graph here that uh, it's stabilized at minus 24 dB. And now I'm going to jump it up to, everything looks good, so I'm going to jump it up to the next level, minus 18 dB. I, I do this personally just for a safety perspective because I'm Especially when I started out with that 50G, I wasn't sure how the shaker was going to respond and I didn't want anything to break uh, other than the plastic beam. Um, so I think this is good practice. Then minus 12 dB and you'll notice everything is very smoothly uh, ramping up. And once I see this is channel 1 here and he's way down from our normal limits. So every, I, I'm not concerned about the shaker. Everything's good. And I'm not hearing anything dangerous from the shaker right now. Minus 6 dB. And things are looking good. So when I step it up here, it takes about a minute and a half to get going. And uh, I, I like what I'm seeing. And so I'm going to go full level here. And it's uh, ramping up to full level. things look pretty good. You'll notice here that the uh, demand phase is minus 90. We're at minus 142. But you'll notice it's going down and the, the um, actual uh, frequency is changing. I had set it for 47 and a half and it's slowly changing that. And it's going to change that value until we get at minus 90 where our demand is. And then, then our test is running exactly 
at the levels we want. So it'll take a few minutes to, to go. And while it's doing that, let me talk about a couple of the graphs. I like this acceleration one because I can get an idea of what the acceleration is on my shaker. I'm not so worried about the end of the beam right now. I'm, I want to protect my shaker and this is well within the limits. The uh, velocity of the, the shaker head and the displacement. So I have these three graphs and I'm always monitoring those to make sure um, everything's going well. This uh, graph here is telling me about the um, phase. And so when this thing gets to a nice, smooth, circular object, you know that you're, you're running um, at the right phase. Here's my transmissibility. Remember, it was 31. And right now, we are at 29.45. So this value is going to start leveling off about 30, which means that you know, we've got about 30 times acceleration on the end of the beam than we do on the uh, head. And so when that settles out, I know I'm pretty much uh, the test is smoothly running, and that's about three minutes start up here. And we are now at minus 90.2. 46 hertz is the actual frequency now we actually needed to get uh, everything going well. So I'm ready to let this thing run for the next um, 15 hours or whatever. And But before I do that, this uh, drive output input is where I have some safety features. And there's a, you know, this is quite a quite a jump. Uh, my, my, my limits are quite wide open right now, so I'm going to shut those down just a little bit by going to my edit test, going to my um, limits, and uh, you can see that this line is going to change here. I'm going to drop this down to 0 0.01 and the max output to 0.1. That's for my startup, which actually we're past the startup. Did you see how that line dropped in there? That tightens things up, and I'm going to do the same on my run. So while it's running, it will not then uh, damage anything if we abort. Now, that, that, this point right here, where it kind of flattens off, I'd like to push that over a little bit. So I'm going to change this to a .005, and that's going to push that line over just a little bit. So I like that. That tightens it up. If uh, something uh, breaks, instead of the shaker head going crazy and damaging anything, uh, this will rise, these values will rise and hit my limits and we'll be all safe. So Rich, that's kind of what I've been doing and uh, we're going to let this thing run. I'm going to send you the data files and the profiles and you can go from there, but at least this should help you uh, and your student get an idea of what I've been doing and maybe save you some setup time. All right, we'll see you.